Would you object to an adult uh, changing gender? Yes, just as I, I would object to any cosmetic surgery. Would you? Yeah, I just think it's ridiculous because we are made in the image of God. What about God? sticky out ears? What about them? Uh, would you object to one What for? Them? Your ears are fine. My what? ears are fine. Would uh, you want to change your ears? No, I don't. Okay. I want to change it all. Hello, and welcome to a very special edition of Fox and Father. With me, the fox, and him, the father. Uh, this week, uh, usually we pass letters and envelopes to each other of stories that I've picked, that I give to Calv, or he's picked and he gives to me, and we then... And don't forget the one that Theon picks for us. As well. And the one that Theon... Theon, Theon doesn't pick anything. Theon's not responsible for anything that goes on in this room. Um, instead of that, we asked you to send in some questions that you would like mm. our are discussed and talked about and we will do that and i've even found a couple from accounts that i've muted right so they must be tweeting oh. at me all the time about what yeah. a dreadful evil person i am <laughs> um actually that's quite a funny story during my libel trial mm. my um ridiculously ridiculous libel trial um it was revealed my legal team found out that my biggest one of my biggest trolls on social media was the boyfriend of one of the, the drag queen no dude. way yeah just no, was like no consequences of course total no notifications every time it's like blasting I've the never response. understood this these people that hate someone so much that they spend all their time and effort online hurting abuse them I don't dislike anyone that but, much. But what about the thought of the fact that you never read their responses? No. Anyway, um, so... But I have a strong mute policy and a block policy. Anyone that's hostile or abusive is instantly blocked. Don't care if they're following me or not following me. Don't care about the numbers. They're just blocked if they're horrible. Anyone that's positive gets a positive engagement or at least a try to positively, positively engage with everyone. That's yeah, blocked. I've noticed that. You do yeah. engage with your right. your audience, which is I don't Reinforcing really... Reinforcing good behaviour reinforcing good behavior that's much better yeah i don't really engage with my audience because i'm i just a lot of my audience just wish me and my world ill i mean they're not real they're not I, real but you've got to curate them so you know i well i, I curate see... them if they mention my ex-wife or my children oh. they get instant blocked yeah. and I if see they that mention a lot violence you. it's it's a block as well they think it's hilarious to mention your ex-wife like it's the first time you've ever seen it it's so stupid i really don't I, but, I only block them because I, not because of any other reason although it's like that's just personal yeah. it's got nothing to do with whatever i'm talking about if i'm talking about um you know wokeism yeah, or matter. critical race theory and someone goes do you ever see your kids yeah. with a picture of billy I'm you get like, a lot of support as well you get there are a lot of good people out there i know i'm i should probably engage with them more and as you say uh curate the experience mm. a bit better um so how was america <laughs> America's always good because people in America you survived the flights they, definitely on the way there and back who knows it's all in God's hand but people out there they are able to speak about the truth and able to speak about Christ publicly unashamedly and that's what I love about American cousins over here we're shy we're embarrassed we're ashamed to be conservatives to be Christians but over there it's normal yeah you were saying that um you were saying this to me earlier. You were saying that, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to stand up and be brave and, you know, do that. And in England, you're getting attacked by both sides. Yeah. So why bother? And why, why not go and join something which is which has already got momentum rather than try and build a momentum against a you know, very difficult tide yeah. of um, actually one of the things we do have to talk about. I know, we, I think it's on the question. Right, look, we have Okay, to, let's, let's well, go. Hang on, I've asked you how you are. <laughs> so how are uh, you? I'm not, yeah, I'm probably <laughs> probably the same as I was last week. But you know, I've noticed the difference between you and I is we, we see the negative that's going on in the world and we address it. But when I've moaned, I feel like it's, for me, it's lethargic, like I get it all off my chest. When right. You, I feel like you hold on to it. Is okay. that fair? I feel like it's... I think I you. feel a lot of shame <laughs> about lots of things. Like, I... I get, People who know me well, like you, say that I give myself a hard time. Mm. And I suppose that hard time is because, in a way, uh, I I'm probably am aware of how nasty I can be and how people can be. So therefore you sort of you sort of have to go, I obviously must need a bit more corrective 
because I'm a bit more destructive, maybe. I, I don't, don't know. No, I don't think that's true at all. Mm. I just think you're holding on to it. Not, it's not your shame and your sin. You're, you're, the world around us is crumbling. This country is crumbling. But it really you, is. But you're letting it really... It, well, it hurts me. It's my home. You know, it's like it always used to baffle me that these, you know, when they did my, my first sort of formative images and visuals of life were mm. things like Live Aid. Yeah. And I was, I was just sitting there watching these poor little goited Ethiopian kids starving. And I was going, why don't you just move from Ethiopia? Go somewhere where there's some food and some water. Yeah. And you realize later in life that that's their home. Yeah. That's their land. That's true. That's where they come from. And that's therefore, you know, yeah, one of the downsides is you're going to get a catastrophic famine every set, you know, number of years. But I'm connected. I'm sure I'm as connected yeah. to England, I think, as they are connected to yeah, their, to where they live and where, you know, Danish people, Scottish people, whatever. Mm. And I do see that when, it, there are fewer and fewer people that seem to be connected to this place. Yeah. No, I agree with you. As, as somewhere people, it makes me really sad, actually. Yeah. But it's about how do we offload that? So we, we try to make a difference. We we do what we can, but we can't we can't hold on to that and let it bring us down. Yeah, how do you... But I don't know how to separate out because of the actor thing. Mm. I was like, when you're an actor, even though a sort of lazy actor like me, who was just like, I just want to be in it. That's all. <laughs> as long as I was sort of in it, right. I didn't really care whether I felt I was good in it. I just Because usually, you know... There's a lot of scripts that you'll get as an actor and you just, people used to put lines through and saying, NAR, no acting required. Oh, right. And you don't need to <laughs> act every line. You know what I mean? Right. You just need to be in it. And I think that that's one of the difficulties that's come across into what I do now is that it, it directly affects me. It's like a never ending film mm. pr production, which is getting worse and worse and worse and everyone's running out of patience and time. Yeah. I think that's probably why. And maybe a bit more, a few more years and a bit more wisdom will guide me in the right direction more prayer all right well i'm not going to feel sorry for myself anymore i'm going to hit you up courtesy of the reclaim the media twitter feed excellent so who is oh first bollocks week? sorry have it's, you lost it i've lost it i've yeah. got one while you look okay you you have a look I, I, why so, do you do that lawrence lola yeah uh, lovely supporter of ours says what's new on gb news after both your sacking expose their fall to the void and their real goal, Leo, Neil, etc. Your point of view about that? Hi, Lawrence Lola. Thank you for all She's your great. support. She's I bumped been... into her just outside here actually one time. What? Yeah, yeah. She in the UK? She comes over sometimes. Comes over? Well, why come and say hi next time? Um, okay, so so she's talking about GB News. She wants to know what's what's new on the GB News front. Oh, look, I found it now. Right, I'll just have to leave it open. <laughs> um, what's new on the GB News front, Cal? Have you got any, got any inside heard, the gossip? As we record this, there have been 20 redundancies. That's a lot. So I don't, I don't like to hear of anyone losing their jobs. Um, at the same time, as all these redundancies. That lot. <laughs> it's like, they didn't oh. seem to mind not only losing our jobs, but getting rid of it entirely. No, they didn't. But there we are. They're also installing um, people in every team to be a management liaison which is essentially a snitch they're putting snitches in every team diversity between and inclusion starving. officer yeah to make sure that make sure everyone's on make sure that the opposition is controlled indeed correctly what's happening with leo ah yeah so i spoke to leo and leo misses us you know for those of you who don't know we you know leo and i and calv and we're all mates yeah. and um he I think he did. He had a Telegram channel where he was shit posting, and what well, he does, it's Leo. He's a comedian, right? Yeah. That's what they do. <laughs> he tries and to I, make jokes. Yeah, and I, <laughs> and I think that the GB News got wind of it and took him off air. No, so for something totally separate to his yeah GB News joke, I thought it was something he'd said on air. Because mm -mm. what I like about Leo is that he'll make a joke about anything and anyone. That he's a true comedian. Like there are no boundaries there with him. That's great. I respect that. Yeah. So I assumed he'd made a joke about something or someone who wasn't supposed to on air. No, it's terrifying, isn't it? That they um, that they run and hide and try and appease and mm. try and... Sounds these... like Tyson, hope not hate. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like... Leo, 
out of all the people, is a really he's a man of conviction. Yeah, you know, and and he also, like you say, he's dedicated to his craft. So mm. him just mocking something, probably knowing him, it will be something to do with woke bollocks. Yeah, because that, he hates it as much as everyone else does. Well, um, I checked in with him to see if he was okay. I didn't ask what had happened, but I checked in to see if he was okay because I care. Mm. But what I find fascinating is I've seen the responses online, and people say, "What he didn't stick up for you and Lawrence? Why would you stick up for him?" Well, that's not how friendship and loyalty works. He didn't stick up for us because he doesn't see GB News as a mission. For him, it's just a job. It's yeah. just how he makes money, mm. and he wants to make money for his wife and his kid. Fair play to him. And he's always been loyal to his craft, loyal to comedy, and not necessarily loyal to the free speech mission or the, the cultural war mission or the spiritual war mission that you and I are on. So it's a different perspective. And for me, that's very different to the people who say they're on the same mission as us, that didn't support us and did back us. Okay, yeah. Well, that yeah, I mean, I think that I was one of the reasons, you know, we were talking at lunch and it was this idea of like, where, where can, where, will this ever exist in Britain? This, this coming together of those that are opposed to this mm. terrible development in society. And mm. the thing is, not really, because it's like, as you say, you're getting stabbed in the back by people that claim to be on the same side as you stabbed in the front by people who claim to be on the yeah. same side as you. Well, too many of them care about the careers. They, they care about fame and fortune more than they care about the mission. Unfortunately. What was the mate? Did you have a moment where you just went, I don't care anymore. I'm, I'm, I believe in the truth, the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. No, I've always believed in the truth, but I think that I don't care anymore probably came. Yeah. It probably was around the sacking actually of like, well, actually we're going to lose our heads anyway. So we might as well just go for it. Go gun ho. They treated you dreadfully, those people. I mean, it's arguable, the, the rest of it, but there, there was just no way that they could have treated you properly. And I, I the thing about GB News, which I find sad, was I, I actually believed it was going to try. Mm. I thought it was going to try yeah. and put the other perspective across and, and let people... But, you know, I suppose Ofcom is Ofcom. What can you do? You know, they you are... You don't have to abide by Ofcom. You don't have to opt into Ofcom. There are ways around it. How? Um, God TV doesn't, for example. So the, I know there are stations that operate in our country or they have loopholes that they don't go through the Ofcom regulator. Mm. So it's doable if they want to do But even within Ofcom, you know, there are ways of of doing it that you don't have to capitulate constantly. And What's they, gonna what they're going to do is they're going to paint Ofcom as the enemy where actually they are the control opposition. So any, anything they do wrong or mistake, they're going to say, yeah, it was Ofcom. It's, it's them. What is going to happen when Labour are in? <laughs> I don't see how it's going to make much difference, really. You don't, but you don't think Labour will try and shut them down? What, GB? Yeah. Possibly, but I, I don't really see that as a much, other than people losing their jobs, I don't see that as much of an issue because people say, oh, but they're offering something different to Sky and BBC. It's like, slightly, very slightly. Um, we don't, Ever so less slightly, but there are some good standout things. Camilla Tomlin is very good on there. I, I, I was a reader in the Telegraph. Yeah, exactly. But I really like Chris Hope and stuff like that as well. Again, read him in the Telegraph. Just, just turn off your TV is the best advice I can give to people. It's so true. You don't need the television. I, it's manipulation. I, when I watch the television nowadays, I feel like, I because it's so rare that I do, that I feel like that everyone else can see this for what it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> the more time you spend away from it, the more um, batshit bonkers it is. Sorry, there's another swear channel. Oh, no, it's still on the right stream. Okay, right. We're going now to Pete. I think Pete. Yes, it's the Pete. Pete who gave us the lighter. Oh, thank you. You say Pete. us? Did he send it to us or did? He well, no, he sent it to me. But oh. it's you know. You, <laughs> but it's. It, I, I think he meant it for us. Okay. You let us know, Pete, in the comments. Anyway, um, to either. So it's to both of us or either of us. Do you believe Tice's recent cozy with hope not hate damages reforms chance of election? Absolutely. They're turning away their base. Who uh, are their base? The conservatives. The people that most people in this country are naturally conservative. And they've realized that the Conservative Party isn't conservative. So they're looking, oh, maybe reform is the answer. And then reform go, he's conservative, he's out. He's conservative, he's out. It's like, so what, who do who are they? Who do they represent? Mm. It's such a shame because they could do something special. They just need a leader with a backbone. And then you just stand by their principles. Then you have principles and stand by those principles. Why are they so, so terrified? There's one bit where he goes, I'm so I'm vigorously defend people's right to free speech. Actually, whilst cancelling everybody. <laughs> it's like, surely 
there's a gap in the market yeah. for just an ordinary person. He put out a tweet saying these people have not stood by our standards. And so I replied saying, can we see an objective policy document of these standards or should we go to the Hope Not Hate website? Because yeah. they are their standards. Well, it, exactly. It's the, the, And also it's a sort of slightly a development of the YouTube community standards thing. So I've made up a set of laws and principles which I like. Yeah, And it's like, no, that's not how it works. But um, I mean, the thing is we have to just sit by and point it out. That's what I do. I just, I just go, these people m encouraged and supported the mandatory vaccination of care home workers. They deny bodily autonomy. Yeah. Mark of the beast. Straight up for me. They, um, their immigration policy is ridiculous. And mm. they let a communist organization vet their candidates for them. I mean, what more do you need to know? Mm. But as a conservative... Who do you vote for? This is the problem. I want to vote people... for a party that says, like, no more immigration, no more net zero. Um, we're going to fix the British culture by by standing by British culture. Like, I want a pro-conservative party to vote for. And there just isn't one. Well, we tried, but Tyson's yeah, but... got nothing to do with it. wants nothing to do with us. Well, I know. Because he thinks I'm too edgy because I tell people to do one. And I, I'm just like, I, I've gone, uh, tell you the moment I... When you, when I was asking you, what was the moment when you stopped caring? Yeah. The moment I stopped caring was day about ten days before I decided to speak the truth, because I thought they're going to get you, they're going to hate you, they're going to not, and you're not going to stop. So I put all of this like, oh, nice and pleasantries aside, wearing ties and talking about community standards, and you can't ever make a joke on the internet, and you can't ever display a sense of character or sense of humor or be provocative or controversial or all yeah. of the things that great people have been in this world. I just went, I'm done with it because I know what you want anyway. Mm. You want you want the end of me right. and I'm not going to give you that pleasure. So bollocks to you is, is my approach. And I think actually Ticey should, should have adopted a similar approach. Yeah, I think it would have gained more support. But the problem is these people want to be part of the establishment so bad. And I want to vote for someone who wants to destroy the establishment. I want this. I want the swamp drained. You and Owen Jones both. Owen Jones hates the establishment, even though he's part of it. Right. He's very anti-establishment, even though he's the establishment. Well, I don't know that he, that he is. He probably dislikes it from the other end of the political spectrum. Well, he's just at the end of the day. The guy on Monday morning, the guy came out and said whatever he said. It was a, a you know a pretty very narrowly shaded piece of um, nasty language about the Germans and the Jews mm. and their reaction to um, Palestine and their, mm. what his perceived overreaction to Palestine was. And all the lefties jumped in behind him. What's the difference? So despicable thing to say, but everyone jumps yeah. in behind him. Whereas, you know, no, who got behind you? This is why I, I, I'm just like, I just like, you, you can only rely on yourself in this in this war in a way. And your closest, closest friends. The right needs to unite behind someone or something. Like we have lots of small parties. David Curtin's great in Heritage. Paul Golding's good in Britain First. I don't know who the next leader of UKIP is going to be. Uh, you've got Reclaim. We've got lots of people doing things. We want to do stuff together. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I, I don't even want to be in charge of anything. I, know, I, know. I just want to go, let's all... We've tried that. We've had those conversations. Ugh. The right just can't come together for some reason. And I think it's because we're, we're too focused on worldly things. We've got to, again, I, I hate to sound like a repeated record, a broken record, but we've got to focus on Christ and follow him. Let's, let's put Christianity at the forefront of everything, including this fight on the right, because the left are so united around their Marxist communist utopia this idea of creating a better world in the here and now which we know to be impossible because the, the utopia is in the world to come mm. but our job here is advancing the kingdom it's not an election winner though it's the problem i don't think there are enough christians but no one's tried well there's christian democratic parties across europe aren't there yeah but we don't have one do we no maybe that's what we need you need to think christian it's democratic started. party christian democratic party yeah, it could have a few things done, I imagine. I want to vote for a party that's pro-life, pro-Christ, pro-Britain, mm. pro-Christendom, mm. anti-immigration, anti-net zero, 
anti-woke, anti-trans in children. Pro-flourishing human, human flourishing, pro-using the great gifts that we have on this earth mm. to, you know, looking after the earth, but also using its bounty wisely yes. to improve our lives and the lives of our children rather than yeah. teaching them how to be sort of suicidal maniacs because yeah. they think the whole world's going to burn up because they got told by some blue-haired frigid cow that she was going to, that the world was going to end. Pro-family, pro-children. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's quite basic, really. Basic is based. <laughs> no, it's basic. It's based. It is based. All right. I'm, well, I'm with you. All right. You choose one. No, I can't. It's gone again. <laughs> do, do you I, even Twitter? <laughs> I, I do do Twitter. I just don't understand how it works. Okay. Um, we've got one here from Pete Clark. To either. Oh, you read that one. I read that one. On Tice. Uh, one from JT, JT Photo Taker. What happened to the Reclaim Party? What are its plans? Mm. The Reclaim Party exists, JT. Um, Does but, it exist as a party? Yeah. Okay. It's a registered political party. Um, I, I think as I've sort of bored people ad nauseam, I don't think that there is a point in having five or six fractured parties on the right. No. I don't even think I'm on the right particularly, but there you go. I mean, I'm a Nazi in woke Oberton window. But um, so the plan I said all along was to try and form alliances with Richard and uh, Reform and SDP. the SDP. But the minute I started taking the piss out of masks during COVID, mm. um, having had William Cleuston say he'd like me to take over the SDP up until this point, once COVID came around and I started mocking masks and wearing lanyards saying, you know, I'm exempt. That upset the SDP membership. So our collaboration ceased then. Even though, you know, I was right, guys. <laughs> Which is funny because there's, there's an old photograph of you and I in masks in a church and people dig it out every now and then and say, oh, look, they were pro-mask. Like, well, are we holding them though, aren't we? We're not even wearing no, them. I think in that photograph we were wearing them because we had to in that church. Uh, yeah. We wanted to go to church. For... Anyway, yeah. I mean, it's it's this no compromise Puritan idea of you had to 100% have never worn a mask and always be, but we fought against these mosques avidly. Mm. But I just find it fascinating that that's the reason the SDP that, don't want you, because you fought the against the mosques. And because I'm a bit edgy, but also that was, that was their reason. So, you know, that's not pro-freedom position, is it? And also, I hate to rub it in, but masks did absolutely bugger all. Um, people are all. still wearing them. And people are still wearing them. So, you know, go for it. By all means, wear your masks, but don't try and tell me there's any science behind the fact that they work, because they don't. Um, and please don't do the, well, they wear one in surgery. Yes, that's so that they don't dribble in your wound. So they don't get blood splatter in their mouth. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that was the SDP. And then reform was was speaking to Richard and I met him met him a lot too, too many times I think to to try and say why don't we have a triumvirate yeah. you me and Habib or something yeah. like that and we'll make we'll make a decision on a two versus one thing over stuff Sensible. but he just said well no, no, no you're you're only interested in the culture and I went that is the only thing that I am interested in. People it's the only thing the anyone should be interested in because everything that you're interested in comes out of the culture. It comes out of how we operate yeah. in the country. You, you but can't also, have you immigration if you've got a culturally captured royal lifeboat institution. But if there were three of you involved, you wouldn't all have to be interested in the same things. Mm. Really, that's the whole point of having a balance. That's what I thought, and that was my suggestion. That was rejected. And then... Um, but it should be noted while you're talking about the Reclaim Party, you met with... Farage quite a few times too. Met with Farage a, a load of times as well. Yeah. And, you know, he's a much more canny operator than I'll ever be. Well, maybe I will be if I'm still treading these painful boards in 20 years. Um, he, he's, you know, Farage is playing an interesting game. Um, but Tice said no, like final no after Shaggate. Uh, okay. He took the GB News line. Yeah. So, and I think he then, I don't watch GB News, but I think he's got my slot. Has he? <laughs> I don't know. I don't occasionally, know I've, I've muted the thing, but uh, occasionally it pops up on um, on Twitter and I'll see Tice's Ticing and I'll go, bless him. yeah, bless him. So that's the reason. The Reclaim Party exists. Long story, sorry to have bored you with it. The, the the Reclaim Party still exists and will exist, but first of all, why would I fight someone who is purportedly on my own side? 
And secondly, there has to be an appetite for it, mm. which is, you know, which is, which isn't about shiny, polishy, politician-y type people. Because I think they've, they're the people that ruined our lives in the first place. So I think we just need normal people. So, you know, in the meantime, what we do is we do the legal stuff that we're doing, the case against Diffie, and then we're doing, um, uh, you know, we do media. with Frame the media. With us two, and, and we'll wait. I tried to do the mayoral, didn't let me do that. And um, we'll wait and see, you know, maybe, hopefully, whatever, people gravitate towards a new type of party. But like you say, there is just not one to vote for. I, w I, I wouldn't vote for reform ever. Not in a million years. No, I wouldn't vote for them either. Because I just, I wouldn't, I'd, 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 I, would, I just either wouldn't vote or if I lived in a constituency with a good uh, Tory, yeah. you know, a kind of, you know, a decent and Andrea Jenkinsy type, Robert Jenricky type, I'd vote for them. Well, I was a member of their precursor, you know, I was standing for the Brexit party. Mm. And of course, Farage stood us all down because he wanted his seat in the establishment. He wanted his seat in the House of Lords. And so he tarnished the biggest chance he's ever had to drain the swamp. I do think that 2019 election, the Brexit party would have got a load of seats. Why did the Brexit party stand down? Because Farage told us to. Why did he tell you to? Because I, th I think he was promised a seat in the House of Lords by Boris Johnson, who reneged on that promise. Gave it to Claire Fox instead. I don't know. Why aren't people more outraged about that? People seem to have forgotten about it. People hold him up on a pedestal as the great leader of the right. When actually every time, every chance he's ever got, he did the same thing with UKIP. As soon as, as soon as it became, or oh, oh, it's too anti Mohammedan, we need to go more mainstream. It, it tarnished their chances too. Why? Because he's because he's is he controlled by the establishment? No, I it doesn't think, seem. To I think be. the same as Richard. He really wants to be in the establishment. He's always been on the peripheral. You know, he's always around Westminster. He's always around these people. And he wants to be in there. He wants in their club. But why doesn't he just join the Conservative Party then? He'd be... well, I suppose he would if he could. And, and this is the well, first they would, time. This is the haven't. first time in the last twenty years that it's, it's been a possibility. He very well might join their party when they lose, and then they start to look at more Conservatives. You know, he said when he was in the jungle, he could be the next leader of the Conservative Party. Yeah, he wouldn't say that unless there'd been conversations going on. Yeah, I wonder. How, there'd be quite a few Conservative um, MPs who would run for the hills, crying. Good. good. The, the wet conservatives. He is the type of conservative they need in the conservative party. Yeah. Despite his attraction to the establishment. I don't find conservatism really that toxic. I find it quite chilled. Mm. It's like, stay out of my, it's good to leave me alone. Let's have some decent rules and structures to it's the way. Some that borders and a small state. That would be nice. Be nice, wouldn't it? All right. Okay. Well, then we, that, that's have you got, it. Have you got the page, Grandad? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <right> again. <laughs> You're on Twitter 24 hours a day. I don't know how you're struggling I'm right now. I'm obviously not on Twitter 24 hours a day. That is not true. I t I t I'm on Twitter too much. I've granted you that. How do I do it? I bookmark the tweet. Mary S. Brown says, wanted to know if Calvin and Lawrence believe that God is in control of all, thing all that is going on. If he is, get in line with what he is up to and you will have a better leader. He wins in the end. Thoughts? You have searched me and you know me. You know my going out, my lying down before a word is on my lips. You know it completely. Where can I flee from your spirit? That's so that, song. that would that would point in the direction of the fact that everything is known. You knit me together in my mother's womb. That it's been co-opted as an anti-abortion psalm as well, hasn't it? Um, so before a word is on my lips, your lips, I know it completely. I think, yeah, I think. Therefore, there's the paradox of of being a sinful person that even though you're going to do something wrong, I know you're going to do something wrong and I'll forgive you for it already. That's kind of a, I mean, I'd take that message out into yeah. the world. I think God is in control. Absolutely. Um, yes, he does win in the end. In fact, he's already won. And as I often say, what we're witnessing now is just the devil going down, kicking and screaming. And actually God permits what's going on now. I don't necessarily think um, he wants as our culture to be dying. And I don't think he wants Christendom to be crumbling. However, he permits it for a reason. Maybe that is so that we form a remnant of stronger faith and build something better than what we currently have. Or it could be for any host, host of reasons. But yeah, he, he is ultimately in control. And yes, we should follow his lead. But that doesn't mean not doing anything. 
Uh, that doesn't mean just sitting back and leaving it to God because God acts through us, right? Yeah. So we are his, his, his instruments in this world. And so that means actively following him. Yeah. It means living lives in the truth. Um, as Rod Dreher in, put in his book, like live not by lies. And like um, Jordan Peterson often says, that like, uh, if you can't tell the truth, at the very least, don't lie. Yeah. Telling the truth gets you in a whole heap of trouble. So what's the answer to the question? Yes. Yes. Yes, he is. All right. Let me see if it's still on here. <laughs> oh, I'm still I'm on it. I'm on it. Okay. Okay. Um, right. Where, where are we? Ah, the Chinese. This is from K7, Slothian. The Chinese are closing down mosques. Should we do the same? Yeah, that's a good idea. We shouldn't have any mosques in this country. Why? Because it's a Christian country. We should have churches. If I go to Mecca, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to find a church, am I? Well, you not? No, never been to Mecca. Well, would never go to Mecca. But are there? Are they? Are there? Is there any? Uh, is there any religion other than Islam allowed to be practiced in Islamic countries? So can you? Um, can you be a Christian in Palestine, you can, can't you? You can, just about, with a lot of persecution, not peacefully, not fruitfully. What's what's to say that religion is the main problem of all of this stuff? That if if we got rid of mosques, why wouldn't we get rid of churches as well? Because it's about objective truth. Like we we've always been a Christian country because we believe Christianity to be true. And therefore, we want to have churches to go and worship God. But why don't we? So it, you know, I, I'm a, a, well, I look at a mosque and I go, "That's alien to my culture." Mm. That's the that's what I think when mm. I look at a mosque. I go, "I don't really recognise that as." I, I find it interesting, if anything. Mm. Um, and then I find the sort of call to prayer in, interesting and the rituals interesting and all that sort of stuff. But maybe if we are that scared of it, of you know, to the point where we try and remove their religious buildings. Why well, wouldn't we just remove all religious buildings? Because on a cultural level, if you're talking about cultural, cultural rather than spiritual, you desire, you decide what your culture is. And our culture has always been Christian. Therefore, of course, we'd have churches, but we don't have the Adan, in the, we don't have the, the horrible screeching of call to prayer of of, of demon worship on the, in the public square. It we, wasn't always Christian. Stonehenge is not a Christian monument. England has always been a Christian country. What about Stonehenge? What about it? It's not Christian. It doesn't mean that everyone in the country has always been Christian. No, but I mean, it's it's that it's Christianity came to Britain. It didn't, you know. So from so from it's saying, we haven't always been a Christian country. From well, because we were, haven't always had Christianity. Hmm. So we couldn't have Christianity before Christianity, but so, as long as Christianity has been around, England has been a Christian country. Yeah, uh, from its inception, and. Even before Rome got here with with St. Augustine of Canterbury, we had the Celtic Christians. We had Christians up in Iona. We had so we've got Ireland, Scotland, Wales, um, and and um the, the precursor to England, the whole Wessex area. So we've always had Christianity here. Uh, but since we've had a king of England, a Rex Anglorum, um, we've always had this faith as our official state faith. Yeah. But what does Prince Charles, he's defender of all faiths. We've had this conversation, haven't we? Yeah, King Charles. So he's changed it from um, defender of the faith to defender of the faith. I don't think, faith. no, he talked about, back in the day, he talked about, I want to be a defender of faith rather than, rather than defender of the faith. But did he not say in the coronation? Did no, he no, no. No, it didn't change. He, he stuck to what was tradition. Right. So he is the defender of the faith. And this is, this is a title that the papacy put on the King of England a long time ago before the Reformation, before the split. And so the King of England has for a long time been defender of the Christian faith. And that's important too, because it's for us. Okay, us. so to get back to the question, so how do you defend the faith when you're supporting and encouraging other faiths, which you know to be true uh, to be false? You know one thing to be true, yet you're encouraging things that you know to be false. I don't get it. It's a weird juxtaposition. It's tolerance, but Christians aren't taught to be tolerant. Tolerance is not a Christian virtue. The only times turning the other cheek is a Christian virtue. But the only times tolerance is mentioned in the Bible is when God is rebuking us. He's saying, don't be tolerant of evil. Don't be tolerant of that. He never ever says, be tolerant of X, Y, or Z. 
But, uh, but this modern woke liberal progressive idea of Christianity is like, we should be tolerant of other faiths and norms. We should be tolerant of evil. We to should be tolerant of this and that. Like, no, we shouldn't. Absolutely, we shouldn't. <laughs> you so much you make it so simple it is simple I just, no but i love it because i just sit there and I go yeah that makes sense yeah okay that makes sense i can deal with christian that. virtues are faith hope and love as an example mm. and the enemy has been whispering in our ears since or since the dawn of time saying did god really say that or you can be your own god you can have your own beliefs you can have your own virtues you can have your own um beliefs and that's what tolerance has become what about being tolerant of everything except intolerance? That's not my religion. If that's what other people want to believe. <laughs> I love you, Cal. <laughs> I do. Um, right. Okay. So the answer to, to closing down mosques is bring it on. Get the bulldozers yeah, no out. Mog, no mosques in the United Kingdom. No call to prayer in the the Adan on the street. It's intimidation. It's It's showing that they're conquering... It's dominance is what it is mm. when they're going up in the cathedrals and doing their Allah Akbars and all of that. It's not good. Is there an example of, you know, Hark the Herald Angels sing things sung in a mosque recently? Do you think they'd I, do I Regions Park it. Mosque would, would do it? Should does? we ask them? I don't know. I'm interested to know. So if anyone knows of uh, of it working the other direction, please um please let us know in this because these places are i mean are it, we are, are we being a bit um snowflakey about the um about our culture being destroyed or is there examples of you know like christian ceremonies taking place in mosques i'd be interested to know wouldn't you yeah i'd be interested to know but if, if there are that, tear them down is the is the Robinson even if they approach. are tear down the mosques tear down the mosques people will say oh you don't need a church building you don't need that to be a christian you can pray anywhere and of course you can pray anywhere you should be praying anywhere no, you, you can't pray anywhere. outside abortion clinic however churches are well you can't churches are consecrated which me literally means made holy which means set apart it's there for the explicit purpose of worshiping god yeah so it, it should not be abused or desecrated in the way that we're seeing recently with i went to liverpool cathedral the and there was a tracy emin art installation See, there. that's just and i was just a bit like why why Wait, what idol are they worshiping there contemporary art tracy yeah um i think it was to get more money in the gift shop i imagine but you know who am i to judge in my cynical little world judge righteously lawrence judge righteously all right is it your turn I can do. Um, common sense is king. Where's that one? It says Islamic doc indoctrination in schools, society, constant Eid, Ramadan, etc. Celebration. The occupation of Britain by a foreign primitive cult, which seeks to undermine and destroy Christendom. I think, I think we've done that one. Uh, that sounds like a re good one. That sounds like a response from Calvin. <laughs> it was that, sound, that sounds like one of you. It's like it's you, just more that I already liked. from your sock puppet. <laughs> okay, what about? Um, let's go. Let me go. Go on, go on. How about discussing the psychological problems that are that? Pro how about discussing what the psychological psychological problems are that internet trolls should work on to help them to become useful members of society oh that is a good one yeah like i said at the beginning i don't understand trolls i don't get them mentality. and they're real yeah they are real you think there's some angry bloke or girl sat somewhere with you on notifications going father Calvin's yeah gone. Like the, these people that don't even follow us but go on every single thing we tweet or any tweet about us and just put real just put bile like vicious nasty stuff there can't it's, be a good place to live, it can it? To have, to have someone you hate on notifications. It must be a very sad, lonely existence. I suppose these people need our prayer more than anyone. It's like that we are living in their heads, rent free. I do feel sorry for someone who would have me or you or anyone on notifications who doesn't follow you just yeah. to, to go, I hate you and I hate you that. But I've, I've got a major suspicion that a lot of it is fake. Maybe 77th Brigade kind of thing. I think a lot of it's fake and it's used to push the the approved narrative. Yeah, the That's, internet is used in that way, absolutely, by the establishment. Well, they, to, to they, the it's proven to have done it. Yeah. You know, they rigged the 2020 election without anyone even knowing it in America by um, getting the Democratic National Congress to have tweets taken down. James Woods had a tweet taken down by them. So, you know, yep. it's, um, I, 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 I would be amazed if Twitter wasn't actively you know yeah trying to 
trying to push a narrative on onto all of us, you know, because it's the only place where it isn't really it's not policed in the same way as every the establishment no. media industrial complex is excuse me, media political complex even. Do you follow people you don't like? Sometimes, yeah. I follow I try to until they find out I'm following them and then they block me. <laughs> but yeah. I followed um I follow James. Uh, yeah, they they always end up blocking me because I always end up responding to them. Like there's weird ones that block you and then start tweeting about you. Yeah, there's, there's one chap I can't remember, Otto English or something that constantly tweets about us like mm. all the time. Blocked us ages ago. It's like that obsessive. I find it creepy actually. I really do. So he's got to have another account. I used to have another account, but when the police took my phone, but I made I was honest about it. Mm. I'd said I'm lost a sock puppet account. Oh, okay. So I could follow people. And, um, but I can't remember the password to it. Right. And then um, I tried to start one up about Pride Month, which I might start up again this year for the annual Pride flag burning. You looking forward to that? I'm looking forward to it indeed. But you're so, right. They must actually go out of their way to see what we're saying or doing because if they've already blocked us and or we've blocked them, that's even worse, isn't it? It does. It seems like a pretty sad life. It is. Me. I would, I would posit. Um, so, yeah, this is it. Okay, right. Oh, look. Why are women girls being forced to accept males pretending to be women in our spaces, rights, and sports? What is wrong with being transphobic? I am. Can no longer stand by any of them. Wrecking society de decency. Do you think UK mosques should be closed and searched by the army <laughs> for weapons? <laughs> Lizzie Cornish. Um, we've done the mosques part of it. We have. Um, what is wrong with being transphobic? Are you transphobic? I don't have an irrational fear of trans people, no. But I do think that it's a harmful ideology, and I think women's think trans, spaces should be do you protected. Think it exists transgenderism? No, not as a all. mental disorder, perhaps. Yeah, but not as a. I don't think a human being can be born in the wrong body because human beings are just a body and a soul. Mm. It would be strange to be born in the wrong body. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, so no. Would you object to an adult? Uh, changing gender yes just as a, i would object to any cosmetic surgery would you yeah i just think it's ridiculous because we are made in the image of god what about my sticky out ears what about them can i would you object if i what for them? your ears are fine my what? ears are fine would uh, you want to change your ears no i don't okay. i want to change it all i want to change the whole thing. it is addictive as well isn't it once someone starts, well also I imagine because it is a face or a, or a boob or whatever. And the minute you change one thing, you go, oh God, now that's out of kilter. Yeah. And you'd have to change. It's not healthy. You'd have to change everything. So I, yeah, I, I'm not sure that the best cure for being um, body dysmorphic is to chop off your genitals. No, I agree. But I can I do, I'm not as so hardline to believe that it doesn't exist at all. What, I think, you think some people are born in the wrong body? No, I think that some people don't want to be in the body they're in. And they therefore- But that's just another they way therefore, of saying they don't want to be themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I think some people have that as a powerful uh, psychological disorder. Which just sounds like depression. Yeah. Which needs to be treated, doesn't it, with therapy and prayer, not with surgery or chemicals. Well, yeah, but, you know, what, what if someone gets badly burned? You know, should they just go, well, I got badly burned? No, that's about healing somebody. Yeah. You heal a physical ailment with physical treatment. You heal a mental ailment with mental treatment. I'm not going to win this argument with you, am I? <laughs> It's really going well for me today. All right, let me have a look. What else we've got? Moon landing hoaxes, says Joe Carr. <laughs> I'm, so, <laughs> I'm so close. Really? I saw you tweet about it. I was like, I'm what? so close. That was a fake video, man. I know, but I'm so close now to saying to myself, why, where are the people on the moon? Surely if they did all of this stuff, yeah. we'd be nipping back all the time. Why? What for? It to cost go. a lot of money. What are we going back for? Just because we can. I suppose, yeah. Further exploration. Go we're to, trying to get further Go to the moon, build a base on the moon. Go, trying to go to some Mars people now. go on holiday there. Oh, I don't know about that. But yeah, I'd go on holiday to the moon if I, could, if I had a shit ton of money. Someone said we can fly you out on a space shuttle to the moon. We built a lovely little moon base. Wouldn't you? No, I think I'm good. Go for a moon walk. I've no objection to you going. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I just don't fancy it myself. But do you, I'm surprised that, you know, all of these, this footage of, you know, some of the spacewalk footage around. I know they're saying it's, they're just training vids and all of that, but I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not invested in this enough to flat earth. 
That's I find that ludicrous. Okay, why? I think I think these people are trolls. I don't think they genuinely believe that the, the Earth is flat. What's their premise? I don't that think the they Earth can. is flat. Well, it's all a conspiracy, isn't it? I don't think. I think most conspiracies we know about, right? Things like the JFK killing, like we know they're a conspiracy from day one. I didn't. I assumed that JFK was assassinated by someone who didn't like him very much. Really? But it turns out he was assassinated by someone yeah, but who didn't like him very much. His own government. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, amazing that all of it's this... It's awful, isn't it? It's, it we, it's just like, I've... That's a horrible part of the wake-up for me, is the um, is this idea that any of this stuff is actually real. I think that's what I was trying to express with my moon landing tweet. I was like, what is real? Oh, now you're getting deep. Anymore. What is real? Descartes deep. <laughs> what is? I think therefore I am. Yeah, I mean, what is what is real? Uh, and ultimately, I suppose that, that does come back to a slightly spiritual thing, which is what you do. Mm. That is real. But in terms of the moon landing, I don't know if it's real or not. I assume it's real. You're on the fence. I, I don't, I'm not that invested. Uh, this is your way of getting out of answering a question. Is it? Yeah, uh, I'm not invested. I'm genuinely I'm not. genuinely more interested in, <laughs> in God, I mean, the how Father, does it affect us if it was, if it, Even if it was fake, how would it affect us? I don't know. Well, it would affect me because I thought that people went to the moon. But surely if it was fake, the Soviets would have exposed it by now. Maybe the, the West versus went. the East. Yeah, but imagine Vlad turning up on TV by going... Oh, yes, by the way, American uh, moon landing is fake. Yeah. Goodbye. And thanks for tuning in to Russia today. Yeah. Do you reckon? Absolutely. Well, I think it's fair enough. But look, we've tried to answer it. Um, and I know I bought that one on myself. Um, oh, look, let's go down to one of my trolls. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's do um let's do some we'll we'll do we'll do one of your trolls. Oh great. And one of my trolls. Yeah. Hutch Popperson, who guess what, doesn't follow anybody, but has us on um Could you ask Calvin how much he made from impersonating UK military personnel while grifting in America? Maybe the Met Police or the British Army know about his service. Huh? Look forward to hearing the answer. I don't even know what that's in relation to. You Calvin, I've never impersonated any military personnel. <laughs> what? Huh? Hutch, that's a conspiracy theory. What? I don't, honestly don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what he's talking about either. I've, I'm sure I would have noticed if you had um, started going, I'd start saying, hi, Calvin. You went, sir, to you. Strange. All right. That was great. Um, <laughs> okay. Here's, here's one of my trolls who actually also is a Calvin troll. How hard does Calvin hate puffs? How is that your troll? Because I'd muted him. Oh. <laughs> I don't hate anybody. Okay. People on the left really, really struggle to separate the sin from the sinner. Mm. I've, got, I've got friends who are all kinds of different people, different races, creeds, religions, sexualities, and I love all of them. But you don't have to love their sin. I don't have to love their sin. I don't love my sin. I don't love any sin. Sin is something that separates us from God. Mm. But... With the left, it's when they don't like something that you do or something about you, they don't like you either. That's the problem. Mm. We are able to separate those things. Yeah. I find that with people. Like, I remember growing up, my mom would sometimes say to me or my sister, I love you, but I don't like you right now. And I think that we're stuck in bed because I think, well, how can you love someone? But of course, you love someone unconditionally because you love them as part of that relationship, but you don't necessarily like everything that they do. Whereas we've been cancelled so many times, I don't mean publicly, I mean personally, because you you cross over someone's line and that's it. They don't mm. like you anymore. Mm. You think the wrong thing about Brexit, that's it. You're no longer their friend. Think the wrong thing about COVID or about the Ukraine or about Israel. Like, that's it. The left cannot cope with difference. Yeah, that's really sad about them. We want to talk it out and they want to kill you. So sort of invention of a... Um, right, have you got any evil, any more evil ones? Um... There's a couple of similar ones next to each other. One's called By Truth Teller, and one's by Patrick. Truth, so, Truth Teller says, how do we get the young to be interested in Christianity and to fight for their right in this increasingly hostile world? Whilst Patrick says, how to save our youth from Marxist teachings in schools and universities, how to regain our institutions, how to stop England becoming Islamic. Well, we've, I, think we've, I think we've covered the... Um, I think you've got to... Uh, uh, the minute schools start promoting dodgy ideologies they should be closed i think they yeah, should make true. a big strong head and 
thing for it. The police should turn up. The head teacher should be marched out, put mm -hmm. in a police van, taken down to a police cell. Said, "Why, why are you abusing children? Why are so, you allowing child abuse to take place on your on your premises?" So that's how we prevent it, or how we shut it down. But how do we promote Christianity? How do we promote the good things to the young people? I think it's about the about the message, isn't it? It's got to be really simple. Most things <laughs> have to be simple. Mm. So. <clears throat> the idea of loving one another mm. but then look what happens that immediately gets corrupted yeah well before you can teach people to love one another you've got to teach people what love means don't you that's the problem mm. we start from the assumption that we know what love means and then the, the the message to love one another gets corrupted into let people do whatever they please with or to or for each other with. yeah whereas love is sacrificial willing the good of the other will is uh, love is is taking something from myself not getting something for myself yeah that's good and also i think that uh people will that will start to drive people more and more and more and more the less and less and less there is of it you may not be able to describe love and know exactly describe it in words and i know that they're in you know in greek and in latin there's uh, there are different words for yeah. love aren't there? yeah like a agape so um it will be interesting to see when when people feel the absence of it in the way that I think a lot of people are feeling the absence of it now. Yeah, they are. A, yeah. are we in a better world in this sort of transgendered Marxist world than we were when we were, when we grew up no. without mobile phones? I mean, are we just sounding old to say that? But no. actually I think, no, we were, we were, we were living in a, in a world which was being prepared for mm. the crap that we're being faced with now. And this is why people feel like they're hated and oppressed because they feel like they're not loved because their idea of love is affirmation. When people aren't affirmed in their own beliefs, they feel like no one loves them. But it's not true. People do love them because they want the best for them. But that's one reason they don't affirm them. Yeah, but then, you know, there's, what, there's a very fine line between affirmation, lack of affirmation and abandonment. You know, you can... I, I sense people abandon people a lot nowadays. If, if they don't agree or if there's something about what they say that they don't like, they just go, right, I abandon you. Yeah. And I think that that's really sad. I've lost lots of friends like that. Yeah. You've said I just don't agree with what you say, therefore I don't agree with, I can't, yeah. you know, I mean, it's good ultimately a bit of a friend cull sometimes, but it's, um, it's a shame. It is. Um, okay. Can you talk about the continued persecution and silencing of Tommy Robinson and Katie Hopkins on the mainstream media and why they've been treated so poorly and unfairly and the far left get funding from billionaires? Asks Truth Teller. Do you regret not standing behind Tommy Robinson? I don't know what you did, actually, so I'll actually say what I did. I didn't make a big fuss when Tommy was cancelled or Katie. I didn't, I, I knew it was wrong, and I, but I didn't make a huge fuss, and I regret that a lot. Wow. What about you? I was too young. I wasn't in the industry. Um, but I only knew of the, well, I only knew of Tommy Robinson through his reputation, and the reputation is the one that the media gives him. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons I've had conversations with him recently to find out, well, who is the man? What is he about? Yeah. Because uh, I know that the establishment and the mainstream media and the legacy media lie and they tarnish people, they smear people. Yeah. And it was clear to me that that's what's been done to him. I think he's a very good guy. I think he's been fighting the good fight for a long time, yeah. and he has my support. Um, and I think I have his, and I think that's it, it's important to recognize who the people are that have been fighting for this country for so long against the establishment. Uh, Katie Hopkins, I always, I remember seeing her on, uh, she was on what, the GMB quite a bit and stuff like that. Yeah. But I just saw her as someone who likes to be controversial for the sake of being controversial. So I don't think for her, it's the same thing as Tommy. I'd love to sit down with Katie. She said no at the moment so far, but hopefully at some point I'll sit down with her, find out who she really is as well. Because I think she's had a lot of interesting things to say. So have you reached out to Katie Hopkins? I have, yes. And she says she's not interested at the moment, but hopefully at some point in the future she will. That's interesting. I haven't reached out to her, but she doesn't seem to engage. She talks about me a bit, but she doesn't really. Yeah, I've seen that. I don't I don't like people who talk about people, but not talk with people. Yeah. I think that that was our big mistake, allowing the, those first and early cancellations. <laughs> yes. That's what because I the media say. knew they could get away with it from then on. Yeah, and once they started, and it then got to this point. And I imagine anyone who who Googles me would be, like, horrified. Yeah. 
I mean, I, 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 I haven't Googled myself in a long time, but last time it wasn't very pleasant. Well, this is why they do it. Like our supporters, the people who we uh, fight with and for, they know who we are. But anyone looking us up now will think, oh, okay, that, that crazy guy for the, from X, Y, and Z, like, because the, the message that's been put out there by the media. So people who are with us see, wait, what are the Times doing with that? That's, that's sketchier. What's the independent on about there? Yeah. But people who haven't been with us might say, okay, this, this, this guy's a clown. Don't follow him. And it's so very power. It's very powerful it though, because if so, if you think about the fact that it's like the climate crap has mm. sunk in with people, because the media just tell them it often enough. So if the media starts saying that you know you you're some what are you meant to be the world's like most strangest cleric, strangest cleric, and I'm a you know a insert phoboist yeah. here. Um, one wonders. I think that that power is loosening. They're losing mm. power to do so so there are attacks like you say devils going down kicking and screaming yeah uh, the interesting one for me was when i went to the cenotaph at the most recent uh, armistice day to pray for our fallen soldiers uh, as most people do every year then when i got back i saw the media had published tommy robinson calls for right-wing bigots to attend the cenotaph and calvin robinson um falls in line or something like that i was like wait i'd never met tommy robinson never spoken to tommy robinson didn't even know he was going there mm. i didn't see him there i went there for my own purposes. And I just thought, okay, so they tried this guilt by association, this smear here. I was like, if they're gonna paint me as some far right guy, okay, who's, who's apparently friends with Tommy, let's become friends with Tommy then. Let's go meet Tommy, let's go see what Tommy's got to say. And so actually they've had the opposite effect, but because I don't actually care what they've got to say anymore. We're gonna need to bring, we, we, that's why I don't think there's a political solution because everyone has to sort of pretend to be all grown up about something. There's, we're gonna need to bring all of those people together at some point and take the country back. Well, I think this is what Tommy wants to do. He wants to put them this free speech event with me, you, him, KT, mm. and just get people, uh, Carl Benjamin, just get people who are advocates for free speech, advocates for this country, mm. and get us all on a platform together and get people down. And let's, let's rally the troops. Mm. I think we do need to. Well, that's, uh, we have spoken to Tommy about that as well. So let's bring it on, get Joey Barton down as well. Mm. Little ledge he is. Um, Anyway, thank you for sending in all of your questions. I'm sorry I didn't read out all of them um, because the, obviously the one about Calvin representing, pretending to be a soldier is a cracker. But we do appreciate all your comments, so we, thank you for sending them in. We do, and um, have a lovely week. God bless. God bless. Take care.